traveling. We've been in San Diego. We were in Vegas for Prosper. John is still traveling. I'm not exactly sure where he is um, or if he's coming back. So we will find out next week if he is back. And we have two very special guests here today. Uh, we have Mallory, who is our creative director and actually a very, 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 very early employee at Thrasio. So she remembers when we were in the back of the Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. So welcome, welcome, Mallory. Thank you. Anthony, Anthony here, who's the industry liaison for PicFu, which is an incredible company that we, we work very closely with. So I'm super excited about this one. We have a lot of tactical stuff. We're also going to go through examples. We might actually run some PicFu surveys too while we're here. So super excited about that. So we're going to start the same way we always start. Anthony, tell us, tell us about yourself. Tell us your story. Tell us about PicFu, how you got into this whole crazy Amazon space. Sure. So it, it all started back in college. A, a good friend of mine who was the president of the Entrepreneurship Club, um, I wasn't even involved in online business or e-commerce at the time. He's, he started getting me into these different conferences and we would kind of go the route of, hey, we're poor college kids and can you, can you hook us up and give us some free tickets? So I think one of the first FBA conferences I went to was Will Mitchell's uh, Startup Bro. I went to a, an event down in, in Florida and that was my first real time jumping in. And it was this whole crazy world of people that were living these just totally different lives from me. I was going through, uh, in college, I was going through the corporate route. Um, long story short is I ended up doing an internship at Amazon, ended up landing a full-time job. And before I started my full-time job, the same guy who was taking me around at these conferences and we became really good friends was like, why don't you come out to the Philippines before you start working full time? I'll teach you how to sell on Amazon. You can launch your first product and then go to work and you'll have something that can provide you some passive income. So I moved out to the Philippines. I launched my first product, learned how to sell, and then started working full time for Amazon in Houston. And I worked there for about a year. I worked in uh, FC operations and then also loss prevention. So I got trained on how to interrogate people, got to do theft investigations. Uh, everything related to physical security of the building. So I was in uh, in Houston during Hurricane Harvey and doing a lot of contingency plannings. Um, anyway, so I worked for Amazon for about a year, really loved it. Don't have anything negative at all to say about working there. And there's a lot of things people read and it's probably generally not accurate of, of the, the vast majority of people that work in a fulfillment center. Um, but after working there for about a year, the same guy who taught me how to sell on Amazon said, hey, I've got this creative agency out in the Philippines. Why don't you quit your job, move out to Manila and help me scale this thing? And uh, I was already a college dropout. I landed this good job and I thought this is crazy, but I knew if I didn't do it, I'd end up regretting it. So I put in my two weeks notice, move out to Manila and help scale this creative agency. And we worked on that for about two years. So I got to see a handful of, of different listings, got to help a bunch of different clients, got to learn a lot about growing a service business, even got to work with Mallory a little bit back in the day. Uh, on some very early Thrasio products. And so we built that business for about two years. We exited in the end of 2019 to a very small aggregator based out of Asia. And um, before we sold the business, I actually met Justin and John from PicFu at the most recent Prosper, not this one, but the one two years ago. And uh, we used PicFu a lot for our own clients on main image optimization. So how could we use PicFu to create better main images and really optimizing for CTR? So after I sold that business, I made a little bit of money, but not enough to like never work again. And so I knew I wanted to stay in the industry. It was clear where the trend was going, that this was going nowhere but up. And so I made a big list of all the companies I wanted to work with. And PicFu was at the top of that list because when I first heard about it, I heard about it at an advanced workshop. Uh, it seemed that some high level sellers knew a lot about PicFu, but it wasn't widely used. And so I approached the guys from PicFu and said, Hey, I would, I'd love to just make sure everyone's using this. I think it's, there's really a lot of untapped potential in terms of market research. A lot of sellers out there, if you'd ask them, Hey, where are you going for feedback? They would just say either they're going with their gut or they're going to their partner or their spouse. And they're like, Hey babe, what do you think about my logo? What do you think about my packaging? And so I just made it my mission to, 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 you know, really learn as much as I could about what our customers were doing and, and help scale the product. And that's what I've been doing for the past year. So that's my econ story. Wow, that's awesome. That is great. That is very, very cool. And so what um what are all the things that are inside pick? I mean, there's I know it started really just more like some image testing now, it's sort of expanded into all you can do a lot of different types of things with with the tool now, all different types of surveys. Like what is the what are all the different use cases you could use something like this for now? Yeah, so you're right. You could really use it 
it, for really anything, and I, I think of it anything as being uh, something that you want to optimize visually, you really want to understand why people like that creative asset, um, you, you could test anything. I think what I try to focus on are what's going to give you the biggest return, what's going to have the biggest impact on your business. So things that are either going to take a long time uh, to get a good creative concept for or things that are expensive. So early on in your launching process, when you're doing your, uh, your logos and your branding, right? When you put in a trademark application, it's going to take six to nine months to get approved. It's going to cost a little bit of money. You're probably not going to want to go back and change that after the fact. So when you're going and getting your logo design, go come up with a few different options. Make sure it really is logical. Make sure it makes sense. Make sure it's visually appealing. Uh, product packaging is probably one of the biggest ones. Again, you might have an MOQ of 500 or 1,000 units, um, and you could change your product packaging and pull all those units from FBA and repack them and reship them out. It's probably not something you're going to want to do. So before you send something off to the printer, um, spend the extra couple of weeks, get some PICFU feedback, and come up with packaging that's going to look really good, that's going to convey the important things about your brand. Beyond that, images are a really big one, optimizing your main image for click-through rate, uh, optimizing your infographics in your image gallery to make sure that the purpose of that infographic is really clear, that people can understand it in a, in a short amount of time. Um, and then videos are becoming bigger and bigger. So if you're talking about the videos that are showing up in the, the display in terms of the sponsored video ads, you know, what, what are the combination of words that you can put on that if someone's just going to be looking at this for a few seconds, what's going to encourage them to see the points that they need to see about the product and again, want to click into that listing and increase your, your sessions. Awesome. That's great. And Mallory, you're a, you're, I would say you're a super user of <laughs> at, you at this point. That. <laughs> yeah. So how do, how does Thrasio use it now? Like what are, how do we use PicFu? Yeah. Um, so Thrasio has kind of started using PicFu. Um, we kind of developed a, a nice practice around it all the way back, you know, 2018 when we first started with Thrasio. And um, it's, it's, really beneficial for um, user or like open-ended feedback from unbiased third-party people who don't have like, you know, an arm in the game that, you know, they want this over that. And uh, so we use it for directional feedback, just like Anthony was mentioning about listings and packaging feedback and branding direction. But I think the nice thing about PicFu is that depending how you use it, you can kind of get answers to a lot of different questions, also including uh, product line extension ideas or new product launches or open-ended feedback. Um, I think one of the great things is their new test, the click test, uh, where you could literally take a screenshot of your competitor's search results for a keyword and get feedback on which one people would go click on and, and find out why they might like a competitor over you. And that's going to give you just information about what people are attracted to. And you could use that data that you're getting in a lot of different ways. So we use it for a lot of different things, not just creative stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's awesome very very cool so maybe so i know i know we have some examples and some ones that people have sent in we can also use the angry orange example too which is sort of the classic classic one and wasn't actually how we i remember when we started doing angry orange we had dozens and dozens of examples of what what that bottle might look like which was a, a pretty pretty interesting story i think too <laughs> yeah i mean um when you're going through any design or graphic like branding process, there's a lot of ideas in the air. And the question is always, what's the right direction to go? You, there's things that people prefer. There's things that people actually respond to without even really realizing that that's what they really like. And I think uh, in this space, there's an unconscious decision to choose things that either are familiar, you find trustworthy, or are really attractive. And there's not always something that we can pinpoint that says, uh, as a consumer, why we like something. And that's where like a brand strategy job is to kind of step in and say, here's all our options and here how we go, here's how we go through it. So when we started with Angry Orange, um, I think, I mean, we started with four really broad general directions. We want to go minimalist. We want to go like very targeted to like the trendy. We wanted to go for this, like, uh, you know, apothecary inspired, like, uh, like, reminds you of something that's old and familiar. Um, so we went through all these different iterations. I think we went through about 30 different iterations for the bottle alone. Um, and then once we saw them all in the lineup, I had changed some of those bottles to that bright orange. And that was kind of the, oh, now we need to dive in on this. So um, I have a quick like screen I can share that just shows it in the search results page. And that's where we were paying attention to a lot of the, the feedback and the, the opportunity is how do we stand out in the search results? So 
from this, we did um, some tests against competitors. So we wanted to see what they were attracted to. And the orange bottle often just stood out on the page. So people automatically wanted to go click on it. Uh, and then, you know, of course we tested our old bottle versus our new bottle. And that was an outstanding win. So we knew we were onto something really good. Awesome, very cool. So why don't we, why don't we pivot to some examples? Anthony, should we, should we pull up one of something and run it through an actual, actual pick foo or, or try to see what we, what we can come up with? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's do that. I'll share my screen just for a little bit of context. So I guess, you know, people submit different ASINs for private label lives. We've got three different ASINs today. This is very little preparation. And it's kind of just to show how quick the tool is and how easy it is to use. But basically we got, we got sent um, a few different products. One was a uh, bamboo toothbrush. We had another for disposable straws and another for a chlorine filter. So what I did before uh, coming on here, this is maybe about 10, 15 minutes ago, is I was just trying to pull up different competitor listings and try to find, okay, what's one criteria, what's one aspect that we can kind of test using pick through. And so I'll, I'll just kind of walk through this real quick. I'm just here in the poll builder uh, on pick through. I just clicked start new poll. Um, and I'm just going to do all of mine from scratch. If you're a new user, we, we just created this thing where you can kind of get this guide and say, I'm in e-commerce, I'm trying to test the main image or product packaging, and it'll kind of help you there. Um, I've, I've done this a few times, so I'm just going to go straight forward for it. The first one I've got is, well, I'll, I'm just going to go backwards, but you know, one of the questions I saw in the chat just a minute ago is, is someone was asking like, hey, can I just drop my URL to my Amazon listing and compare it to a competitor? Uh, and say, what do you think? Is mine better or whatnot? And you definitely can do that. I think what you're going to find is in terms of giving you the most success is focus on one thing at a time, right? So don't just say, go look at my entire listing, pick one singular concept that you're testing. And so for this chlorine filter, again, I don't know a lot about this product beyond the research that I just did, but I can see that a few different competitors uh, on the first page, they all had kind of their different version of a sizing infographic. So I don't know how important this is or isn't for this product, but I imagine, you know, people kind of want to know what kind of tabs is it going to fit? How big is this going to, this, this thing going to look in my pool? So what I've done is I've got three different competitor infographics. Each of these is trying to do the exact same thing. They're just trying to show the size and dimensions of this pool chlorine filter. So I've uploaded my options here and I'm just going to say, which image do you prefer? And if there's any typos, I apologize in advance. But which image do you prefer for this infographic that shows sizing dimensions of this pool chlorine? Man, do not look at this, this is so bad. <laughs> Holder, right? So luckily I've got Grammarly here and it's gonna clean these things up. But okay. I like to just okay. I like to just drop in some some context so they know what they're looking for, right? And I'm asking specifically which of these infographics do they prefer, which, which one is the best. And so now I'm going to come down here. Um, I'm just going to, it's going to be ranked choice voting. So they're going to choose what they like. And you can pick a custom audience, a uh, really common one that people like is Amazon Prime members. Maybe if I knew more about my target audience, I could uh, choose down to things like gender, age range, income, ethnicity, whatever you might be. I'm just going to click 50 for the point of this. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to click start. We've got a couple more of these to get through. So I'm just going to let these things run in the background. And okay, this is going to start right away. I can get rid of that. Okay, oopsies. All right, um, I've got two more that I want to run real quick. And I'm just going to get these things started. If we have questions on the back end, we can, uh, we can ask those. So another graphic that I found, this is for this bamboo toothbrush. Again, this is kind of what you would call like a proper, um, man, this thing just keeps getting in the way. This is what you'd call like, I don't know, a proper use graphic, but I'll zoom into these later, but basically it's showing you that for this bamboo toothbrush, if you don't want it to get moldy and get mildew on it, you're supposed to kind of drape it over the cup. So again, I'm just gonna ask which, which image do you Question on this, Anthony or, or Mallory, how, how do you pick where to start? Like, do you, do you always start with the main image? Do you start with secondary images, with the video, with the infographics? Like, if you're going to yeah. pick one place to start, where, do, where does someone start? I mean, if I'm looking to optimize a listing, I generally start with that main listing photo. Um, that's your first hook into engaging a customer. So, 
I think it deserves a lot of testing and making sure that you're making the right choice. Um, and then beyond that, even just running against competitors and stuff, um, something me and my team really focus on is identifying what is the goal of our pick field? Uh, what are we testing for? And it kind of goes back to what Anthony mentioned about like limiting the variables. Um, if we're testing for which design branding is preferred, we're gonna keep the copy the same, we're gonna keep the packaging size the exact same, try to reduce as many variables that people can give feedback on if you have a specific goal in mind. Because if you are thinking, I'm gonna set up this poll and see what people think about uh, the colors, but there's like five different things that are different between all the images, you're gonna get a lot of um, confusing feedback on what, what you're actually trying to understand. So we always talk about limiting the variable. Uh, we, we like to do things around branding, uh, messaging on our packaging is a big one. So um, in that main listing photo on, on Amazon, you have an opportunity to use your packaging in a way as a billboard, right? Like you can say, this is, you know, going to make your house smell amazing. And you can put that right there on the packaging and you try to get people's attention. And so I think that's uh, like a pretty cool opportunity uh, to test if you keep the branding and the packaging the exact same, but test the messaging, you can see what people respond to from a value proposition standpoint. Anthony, what we got here? Yeah, yeah, so this is just the last one. And, and I, I definitely agree with Mallory. Optimizing your main image is probably one of the easiest and quickest things you can do. So again, what I've done is I've just found a few different versions of uh, competitors' main image. This is the one for the ASIN that we were sent. Um, and then you've got some different layouts, some that show the packaging. So we're just going to leave each of these three running in the background. Here's the toothbrushes. And then here's the size and dimension for the pool filter. So we'll just let that run in the background. We're already gonna to start to get responses. That's awesome. That's so cool. How long does it normally take to get, get responses? It seems like it is pretty almost instantaneous. Yeah, so after you set up the poll and click start poll, you're gonna start getting responses right away. One of the things I like is in, in the tab at the top, it gives you a little counter like zero out of 50. And I'm very impatient, so I'll keep going back and, and checking. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing is going to be done usually in about 30 minutes to an hour. The, the whole panel on PicFu is all based in the U.S. So if you're running it on opposite U.S. hours and you're doing it at three in the morning, or if you have a really specific group and we've got to find all of these different, you're like, hey, I want female wine drinkers that have a dog, you know, two kids. It's going to take a little bit longer to pull that together. But generally half, half an hour to an hour, something around that. That's also my team's one of our favorite things is to watch the results roll in and uh Give each other live updates so that's pretty fun mm -hmm. oh that's that's great yeah i mean the, the other thing to consider too where creative is often one of the most overlooked things i think when it comes to amazon as well as we're we're all very scrappy we're quick to you know we go to fiber we go to different places to get images easy and it's it's fast to get them up but there's a lot of ripple effects when you're when you're talking about creative and it's very subtle changes and small improvements in creative can have huge impacts impacts downstream and I was doing just a little bit of math while, um, while Anthony was loading, loading some of that stuff in. And this is a general example. Um, just looking at conversion rate, which I know we creative can help sessions, can help conversion rate, can help all different types of stuff. Um, so if you have a product that had 250 sessions per day and a 20% conversion rate and a $30 AOV, if you just increase the conversion rate to 22%, so 20 to 22, so a 10% increase, and you kind of roll this hole down. So that type of product on that math gets 50 orders a day. That's $1,500 in sales per day, $45,000 per month, $550,000 per year. If you just get that 2% increase in conversion rate, that goes up to $604,000 per year. So if you say your average margin is 25%, just on a 2% conversion lift, you're pocketing almost an extra $15,000 per year in profit. And that's just profit. It's not to mention all the positive feedback loops you're giving Amazon because you're moving five more units per day, which increases your velocity, which increases your rank, which increases everything. So that's just a very small way of looking at how small changes in conversion rate or sessions can have very large impacts on a brand. Definitely. Um, yeah, the feed, feedback loop is really, really important and small changes, even as simple as um, if we want to take that straw example really quick, I have, I pulled some, uh, some images from the search results for this and I, I thought maybe this uh, middle one uh, down at the bottom was the, the, the listing that was sent, I'm not sure, but 
even small changes if it's the same product, no packaging, like the direction that the straws face if they're bent, like the size and the space they fill up and the like the image. Um, you can see the Minimo reusable stainless steel straw, I think is on a, um, a more hor like horizontal layout. So it appears really, really small compared to the competitors. So even just a small change as like rearranging your layout so you take up as much space as possible is something that I would uh, take photos of, play with, and test to make sure that it could compete against some of the top performers here um, and see what else the, com the competitors are doing that maybe could help it stand out as well. Yeah, no, that's a great one. What are, what are any of the best practices? I mean, sizing is, one, is actually a big one. So just looking at Amazon and making sure your image sizes are appropriate is a small fix. Are there any other small fixes, Anthony or, or Mallory, you see, you see sellers should be paying attention to when just looking at, at Amazon in general? You know, I, I'd say in main image, it's, well, especially for main image, there's some really clear trends that people seem to want to prefer and that Amazon seems to want to promote these listings. And so if you think about someone's like searching for a product, by the time they get to Amazon, they already have the intent to buy the product, right? They've gone and they've typed in bamboo toothbrush. They've gone and typed in these reusable straws. They're going to buy one of those things. It's just a question of if they land on your specific uh, if they land on your specific storefront and they end up converting at your page. And so it seems that one of the big things Amazon is a, really likes to see is if you can give an indication in terms of what the person is getting and the function of that product before they click into the listing. And so anything you can do to kind of show the product in use, whether that's with contextual props, uh, whether that's with the use of like light models, if you think about like a posture corrector, if you go to that uh, main search term, if you go to first page of search results, you're not going to probably see the posture corrector just on a white background. You're probably gonna see a male and a female model wearing it and demonstrating that this is uh, for a posture corrector. It's unisex, it doesn't matter who's wearing it. Um, and then there's also something about, you're gonna go through that, that first page of search results and you're gonna see a lot of bright colors in the shirts, whether they're orange or blues and the males and the female shirts are contrasting each other. So like, what can you do to, to show what the product is? It gives, gives some expectation of what the person's gonna be getting. But also, what can I do to draw eyes to my listing? When we're going to the Angry Orange example earlier. I mean, it's a beautiful bottle, but it's also, it's, it's right in your face, right? Like if you're looking at a whole page of search results and the Amazon platform is generally very white, what's your brain naturally going to gravitate towards? Something that's going to blend in with a white background or something that's going to hit you in the face and be like, bam, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a really interesting point. And just to reiterate, yeah, that first task is uh, anticipating what the consumer's questions are about, will it come with a baggie? Will it come with a brush cleaner? Will it come with whatever it needs to be? Like, will it service all the needs that I'm looking for? But then also like, how do you make it attractive like a lightning bug to something bright? Um, and yeah, I think, I think packaging also is just a standard. Like generally things with packaging in that main listing photo do well. And um, it is in terms of service because you can include anything that comes shipped. So I think that's a good opportunity too. hundred percent. I mean, those are probably the, one of the two biggest things. And, and you brought the first one, which is a thumb stopping element. Because I think the average time to purchase, I believe is what, three minutes from when you get on Amazon to buy something. So it's quick. This is not a you know, direct to consumer side. You're not doing research. You're going there. You have three minutes to get someone to buy something. So get them, make it easy. And another reason why PicFu is some, something like PicFu is so handy is you get so absorbed in your own product where it's like, I'm looking at my thing all day and you just, you don't see what's wrong with it. You don't see that it could be confusing or it's missing the value prop or it's missing the something that makes it super easy to know what it is. So having that external feedback or is, is so, so important. Um, Common had a couple of cool questions I want to, I want to ask, ask Anthony too, while we're, while we're waiting for some of the results to come in is, is bullet points and product description. Is that something people use BigFu for? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, there, you know, what, what, what I would recommend doing is, it's like you are saying earlier, when someone's shopping on Amazon, a lot of sellers think that people are shopping in this, you've got this captive buyer, they're like totally focused on your product. But in reality, when people are shopping on Amazon, they're doing distracted shopping, like the dogs barking, the kids are running around in the background, it's been a crazy year with COVID they just wanna get in and they wanna get out very quick. And so when you think about your bullet points, you don't, you really wanna focus on how can I read through this and more likely skim through this and it makes sense and my brain is gonna retain the important parts that me, the seller wants to give to, to the, the person who's gonna buy it. 
And so when people use PicFu to optimize it, sometimes they'll go and upload an entire duplicate versions of the bullet points. You can do that, but I recommend focusing more on what I call your leading words. And these are kind of the first few words that start the bullet point. And so I'm just gonna focus on a single bullet point at a time, maybe my first three bullet points. And I'm gonna test different versions of like, okay, and I'm gonna ask a very specific question, like which bullet point is most clear, most easy to understand for this specific feature of this specific product. And I'm just, and it seems really granular, but again, you, you wanna have someone be able to just like skim the first few words of bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, their brain is checking off those individual boxes, which is gonna allow them to be like, yep, 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 add to cart. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's interesting about PicFu is that when you do those types of tests around messaging or your title or your, your bullet points, um, you actually are like learning a little bit about like buyer psychology. So if you can keep record and mental notes about what works well and what doesn't work well, that's only going to make you a better seller continuously as you launch more products. Mm -hmm. Great. Hey, Colin, why don't you come off, come off mute? I've got a couple of great questions. I also love the, love the background. That's one of my favorite, favorite movies. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, I actually was using PicFu like five years ago, six years ago, like way back when, when we were comparing like brand names and domain names and which one would you like to buy and stuff. So it's really cool to see you guys grow. And um, so I have like a few questions. One is like, I know it looks like there's like an A to B experience where like you put an image and you compare the two. Is there a way to ask customers to like go through a process and see which ones they like better like hey buy this amazon listing buy this amazon listing. which coupon process did you like better and then the other one is how would you suggest testing like the mobile experience since a lot of shopping happens on mobile you know so yeah both really good questions so right now there's not really a process where you could say hey go and actually buy this this product you could like what people do, sometimes they'll upload a URL if they're testing a sales funnel and they'll go through um, a more common question that people ask though, just because it's, it's so broad, so many factors on the checkout process or what's on the whole listing is rather than ask them to give you feedback on everything, ask specifically about what doesn't make sense, right? So if you drop in a, a link to a whole listing, like what on this listing is confusing or what in the sales funnel uh, is a red flag or you know something along those lines. Your second question was about mobile experience on Amazon, like how would you go about trying to test mobile experience on Amazon? I mean, it's growing. So I think a lot of people are shopping on it. So. Yeah, yeah. So the people who are responding to the pick food polls are some of them are going to be on mobile, some of them are going to be on desktop. What I recommend doing is just asking single graphics. And so you would come up with different versions of a graphic and you would say, hey, which one is either most simple or most mobile friendly? And so you would, you would come up with different versions of the graphic and one would be very, very busy potentially on the far end of the spectrum with a lot that's really going on. And then you'd have one that's like ultra minimalist where it's just one photo, maybe just a one or two lines of text, just very easy to understand and then something in the middle. And you would either just say which image do you prefer or which image is most mobile friendly, which one's the easiest to understand, which one's maybe in bold the fastest to understand. Yeah, you could also take a screenshot of your listing on your phone and then Photoshop the photos that you're testing like into that and like replicate the experience of looking at your phone in a way that could be interesting to see if it makes an, a difference. Yeah. yeah. Can you compare videos or is it just right now, just screenshots right now? Like if I recorded, hey, I shopping on this and like in sh instead of having them go through the flow, I would go through the different flows and they would just pick which flow based on the video they watch. Is that an option right now too? Yep, you can upload videos for sure. Oh, cool, that's awesome. Nice. We've, uh, we've, I think we've done a couple of video tests where we like to test the ideas of a video before we launch into production. So I'll have the team put together something really quick that's like the idea of what the video is going to be. And uh, we've been able to test some like thought process before we fully execute something too, which has been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the video video is key, especially since I mean, video is becoming more and more important on Amazon in general. And sponsor brand video is taking up a higher percentage of traffic. Um, it's just Amazon Live. There's all different types of video now. The mobile one's interesting comment too. I was, I was trying to think through. I mean, uploading a screenshot on mobile is one way to do it. You could you could even try to move products around on that image to see and see even just how some of the placements interfere with what people pick potentially, and see like if that actually changes changes the dynamic, even though it's the exact same products, just organized slightly different, differently on mobile. Um, 
we can play around with if you were good on Photoshop, play around with some of the scores and see like, hey, if if my listing went from a four five to a four seven, did that actually improve someone picking it and things like that? So you could you could play around with those mobile screenshots and potentially glean some cool insights. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like the ratings, I didn't think about, or the number of reviews, right? Like, hey, yeah. if I bumped up the reviews, like with Photoshop, would they have picked this over that? That'd be pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks, Common. The next question that we had um, was from Duvall, and he was wondering, do we have pick food to test customer responses in the in markets other than the United States? Yeah, right now it's all just the US, but we are we are working on panel expansions, and that's going to be coming in, in the next year. But yeah, we're working on it right now. It's, it's all US markets for sure right now. Cool. I'm actually going to pull up um, one of the examples from Angry Orange for you guys to just look at, and you guys can talk through. Cool. I, I love this. I talk about it all the time. I've, maybe can, can I give, I, I know it's the Thrasio example, but like for people who haven't seen this before, can we give a little bit of context? Sure. Um, so in 2018, we acquired Angry Orange um, and the before picture is what the bottle and main listing photo looked like when we acquired it. So naturally we wanted to uh, evaluate it for opportunity because it, it kind of felt like it could only go up from here. Like I think what was awesome about Angry Orange and the reason we acquired it is because people loved it on Amazon. It was like had a cult following, it had all these awesome reviews. And um, I think that was cool to see that from a creative perspective, even in spite of maybe not the best branding, people love this product. So now we need to find a way to like reskin it and make it a standout product. Um, so yeah, we, we dove into uh, why do people like it? We read a lot of the reviews, all of the questions about it, and really, um, try to figure out the best way to position this moving forward. So that's where we went through all of our iterations. And, um, you know, we got this awesome tagline that John came up with, smells like heaven works like hell. And then the, the national branding like theme kind of came together. And uh, since then it's just been about, you know, making a bold statement in the market. Yeah, and I guess I guess what what's cool to me as well from a, like a numerical perspective is the way that I heard the story as well is that when when Thrasher acquired the brand, it's like a, a two million dollar acquisition, right? And then they you guys go through the, the process of changing the product packaging, you upload it to Amazon, send in the new inventory, and overnight the brand goes from like two to twenty million dollars. And so I tell that to sellers all the time, and they're like, "Well, you know, how do I do the same thing, right? You know, I've got a two million dollar brand. People love the product. It's a good seller." Um, and I think what's really interesting about this example is your team didn't just go from the, the before to the after. It's not like a designer came out and we're like, this is the one, this is it. And then you upload it, right? It was a painful process. <laughs> I, I was the designer and these ideas don't come out of thin air. It takes a lot of um, not only like time alone thinking about the ideas, but you have to talk about the ideas. So talking with Brandon, talking with John, talking with Stephanie, talking to people who had never heard of it before. Um, just getting their input on, you know, what is working well in my 30 iterations that I've done versus what might not be. Um, I might be able to, in a second, go find all my iterations. I've got a photo of it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I think through that process, we're talking about pros and cons of each and then pulling what's working from one, what's working from another and finding the best solution. And through that like marriage process, we finally get to like a place that we feel we're really confident. And when we, when we ran this pick through, um, I think it was a standout, like 90% loved the orange bottle over the old angry orange. So we knew we were onto something good once we got that result. Yep. Yeah, it was definitely a big, it was a big process. I think we even, even before, I think we did a couple of pick food tests when we narrowed it down, we were doing some Facebook ad testing. We were just putting it up, even though you couldn't even buy the bottles. We we're just, we we're just looking at click through rate on some of this stuff just to get a gauge of what were people were interested in? Because there are a couple of bottles we actually really liked. And I think myself, John and Mallory were going back and forth every single day trying to narrow it down because there were some pretty, pretty, pretty yeah, sexy options. Just see if I, I can find that really quick. But it, yeah, it takes it takes a lot of um, creative thinking to make judgment calls about what is working well and being objective on what isn't, even if you might like something. Yeah, which is always a hard process. It, it, yeah, and wait, Eileen, can you just pull it up again real quick? Because there's a, there's a couple other, and the audience might find this to be helpful as well. is is really interesting to look at this product specifically because there's some some overall packaging trends that I think I'm seeing everywhere on Amazon, and they seem to be doing quite well. 
And so some of the things that I noticed, obviously the first thing that you notice is the orange bottle, right? It's a beautiful bottle. It's, it's, it's really bold and it catches your eyes. But some of the other things that were on there as well, like the fact that the angry orange logo was quite big before, and now we've made the logo much smaller. And then what does the product actually do? First thing that you're going to see front and center in your face, the words odor eliminator. We've got the dog and the cat because it's, you know, this is a pet deodorizer, the primary function of using this product, the alternate tagline, the kind of oranges flying around. And so what I, what I encourage everyone to do as well, is kind of like Mallory is saying, is like, think about not just what the packaging is going to be, but all of the little individual elements in the packaging. And so when you're running through PicFu, start testing these different concepts. Like if you've got your brand name, your brand name or your, your logo might be one element. What the product does is another element, uh, some kind of artistic or icon or animation of, of maybe a use case as a different element. A good you know. point, because that is how we narrowed things down a lot too, was what's the message we're trying to tell a consumer? And if you looked at one design that I made, it's like, oh, that's like an orange fragrance. I was like, oh, no, 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 we're, it's for pets. So, oh, okay, we need to add the pets back in. And so you go through this process of making sure that the messaging that you're putting on the bottle makes sense. And I made lo a ton of logos and a lot of the logos were angry orange centered. It was the, the front of it. And then it was like, well, we still don't know what it is. So it's like, okay, angry orange falls to the back, odor eliminator become, pulls forward. And um, you have to go through that process and talk about it with people who don't, aren't don't have like stake in the game because they're going to go well i don't know what that is and you have to listen to why, what what are they observing that doesn't make sense exactly that's such a good one even the small touches too like look on the one on the left there's there's some like some shining on it you can almost see like there's lights there's some shading that doesn't make it look quite professional enough too and even those small little little tweaks to make it look more clean and more professional and more cleaned up just makes it perceived a higher perceived quality or more authentic and it's the you can trust a lot of the reviews that are behind it so even just the small touches of making sure the the shading's correct and there isn't you know flash marks and things like that but it looks like a professional photography that can actually add a lot to the conversion rate because people trust the product much more yeah and 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 as well too it's if you look on the design on the left hand side the older design you've got all this extraneous information that now I'm sure has been moved to the listing, but it's got all of these common uses, like all of these, you know, all of these little things that if, if you think about it, if I'm looking at this from the first page of search results, I'm not going to click on the image. I'm not going to zoom in. I'm not going to be able to see this versus the version on the right hand side gives you exactly what you need and really only what you need because the main image, right? Or in this case, because the, the packaging, the product packaging is this product. You can't take a picture of the liquid and, you know, show it, you know, it's not going to help is the packaging is what's going to sell this and so your goal of this packaging isn't to explain every aspect of the product and every potential use case. It's just to get that person to say, hey, this one looks like a reputable brand. Let me click in and you can save some of the other information on the packaging for inside of your image gallery, for inside of your A plus content or in your bullet points. Yep, 100%. Information overload is a real thing, especially on, especially on Amazon, D2C, anywhere e-commerce. And sometimes people feel like the more information you put, the easier it gets. You get all this stuff out there. It makes it easy for people to pick. But it actually creates a lot of anxiety as well when people can't tell what something is or is just too much in there. And sometimes just the simple, clean, easy designs that are just right in your face that says odor eliminator make it the easiest to, to pick. So how are, uh, are those results coming in at all, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just going to say, so... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll drop these in the chat as well. So anyone who's watching can go through, but as you can see here, we're, we're like almost done here. We've got load 49 new responses. So this one for the straws is, is almost completely done. This one for the bamboo toothbrushes, this is done. And uh, for the chlorine filter, this is almost done, 49 responses. So I'll drop these into the chat. So uh, every, all the, the different hosts can take a look and uh, we'll start going through, see what we see, what we see, and then maybe, yeah. Uh, where do I do this? Sorry. I think I can just drop this on there. I might. I don't know if I'm like covering it up or whatever. Oh, here we go. Share. Okay, I'll just drop these in the chat real quick. And this is to everyone. And the cool thing with PicFu is you just, you know, you can just share it with, with anyone. They don't need to have a PicFu account. So this is particularly helpful in, you know, sharing it with your creative teams. It's pretty well. It's very easy. 
Okay, so we can start, I guess, first with the, the bamboo toothbrush because this one is already done. Remember, so the, the point of both of these graphics is just to, you know, they're, they're saying almost the same thing, but in order to avoid mildew on the toothbrush, you know, store it like this. And it's not super surprising to see that option A is the winner. I think this one looks like it was made pretty quickly in, I don't know, Microsoft Word or Paint or something like that. So it's a slightly nicer background. For me, when I'm going through picture results, I don't really care so much that this got 64% of the votes and this got 36%. Because honestly, I think both of these graphics, there's a lot that we can do to improve them. I think what we should really be doing is we should be going through the, the feedback down here and trying to figure out, okay, what are the reasons why people like this? And how can I take that information back to my own creative team uh, and create something that's even better? Um, that's definitely what we go through too. Um, after you know we're running the poll, we review every result answer and then try to read between the lines of the feedback because we're trying to figure out for the one that didn't win, why did they like it? Like, why did people pick that? And then for the one that did win, why did people like it? But also why didn't people, maybe because sometimes when they choose the one that didn't win, they say why they didn't like the other. So you're getting feedback on both at the same time in a way. And that's where like that marriage result happens where you're like, okay, now I need to take the best of both and pull it into like the perfect execution. Yeah, the gold is in the comments for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, let's keep going through some of those. Those are great. Yeah, so I'm I'm just I'm just going through real quick and, and let me know if those links work, guys. But so I'm I'm just going through one of the cool things you can do on PicFu is there's a few features here. You've got the pin feature, you've got thumbs up, thumbs down, and and ask a follow-up question. So I know we got a question a minute ago, and it's like, you know, how how are people vetted? Um that's one of the big things we do is through this little up and down vote. If people are giving garbage responses, those people when they get down votes, they're just removed from the panel. So we're constantly thinning the panel out. Um, but a really cool feature is this pin feature. And so it'll actually maintain your pins. And so you can copy and paste this URL at the top and it'll, it'll maintain these pins. So I've just pinned a few that uh, I saw that, you know, had some interesting words in it. So they're saying that the plant grabs your attention. Okay, that's interesting. Like what's something aside from the toothbrush that's going to make sense uh, that people might want to see. So maybe this is just kind of showing it on, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Are you going to brush your teeth on a kitchen table? Maybe not, but like, how could I maybe have some accent piece in the background of this that's going to be more bathroom specific? Like these are the things that come to my mind. Uh, people are saying colorful and eye-catching, right? So it's no surprise that the, they, they like something that's a little bit more bold than just the white background. Okay, these are good things to know. Uh, wording of the instructions, right? So if I come up here, they're saying they like this one, they like the wording better. This one seems long just from looking at it, but I'm already starting to get a few things that people find important about why one of these graphics is winning, right? What's the wording gonna be like? What's gonna be the things in the background, the props that you're using in this, in this photo shoot? Um, how is the image composed? And so now if, I, if I'm gonna take this and try to say, okay, I know I wanna have a picture of the toothbrush on top of a glass. I might start thinking, what's the best possible glass that I can get? Something that looks really good, something I'd find in a bathroom. Uh, what's gonna be in the background of the shot? What kind of props? Really important, what's the wording, right? How can I make this wording as big and bold and clear as possible to create something that's uh, even better than this? I don't know yeah, if anyone- And I took on the right too. Some of the things I was noticing is that people like that the right was clearer. And I think that's one thing that we could take from the right and apply to the left is actually make it, because the one on the left is actually kind of hard to read if you read it fast, because it's italicized, it kind of blends into the background, where if you made it a bit more bold and probably just like white against that dark background, you could read it much faster. So the clarity and how fast you can read something is important. I think there's something to, um, when, when you're looking at all the images on Amazon, it's usually in a thumbnail perspective. So if um, from that thumbnail, if it looks interesting enough for them to want to go click on it, they're going to want to learn what you're trying to tell them about and hopefully make that conversion a lot quicker. 100%. Yeah. Um, I did find label options if we want to go back to that, or we can uh, do a random, you know, deep dive into some Amazon categories. Yeah, whatever you guys think, if those other two are done, done or not done yet, or we can get some, get some knowledge from them while they're still working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'll pop those up real quick and then, yeah, let's jump into to something different. These, these ones are pretty, pretty simple examples. Like what I would, I would prefer if we had a creative team come in earlier and just, just because we, we could probably look at this and get some ideas for how to make this better. 
just have something our designer spin something up in an hour and just try to come up with something better that was already a test rather than just looking at the competition. But you know, obviously this is for, for private label live. This is for the reusable straws. This is the main image, right? No surprise that, you know, I'm sorry if, if the person who submitted this ASIN, um, if you're watching, but this is all the feedback that's gonna help you get better. But yeah, it's no surprise that this image wasn't the winner. Um, I would have anticipated the ones that were showing the packaging. It's a real good square image, but let's see, let's scroll down and see kind of what some of the responses are, right? People like to see the bag with the logo. Um, yeah, they would rather see that. Let's see, clear image of what is included, right? People want to see, am I getting, okay, so I'm getting four straws, two are bent, two are straight, one has the brush, and we get this little cleaning case. Um, this isn't a super surprise. I don't, I'm sure for the audience as well. Like you're getting- Someone on option B said that they really like that it says like reusable. So again, it's like messaging on your packaging as well. Yeah, so. that's a good one. Reusable bag. Yeah. It's not on this one, on option B. Oh, okay, okay. I got you here because it's saying, yeah, reduce, reuse, recycle. Right, so it's like, that's a good point as well. You know, now we know, let's say you're selling this product, right? And now we know that, okay, this is the layout that people wanna see, but now you've got all this real estate on the packaging, right? These are still pretty minimal designs. You could put whatever you want, maybe you just have reusable that's going directly across the side. And so I probably wanna go and try to, you know, I, I know that I'm gonna try to do my straws and orient them like that, but I'm gonna probably try to make some gains on the packaging, right? Cause that's gonna be an easy change to make and real quick and easy for sending messages. Mm -hmm. uh, last one I'll send it. Oh, sorry, was there anything else? I know I'm dumping around. No, this is great. Okay. Yeah, then the last one we have here, we've got this pool chlorine filter. They're showing sizing dimensions. This is the winner here. Let's see why people liked it. Okay, so some people aren't liking the contrast of the, oh, this actually makes sense. People are saying, so maybe this is your graphic, right? And they're saying that the, the contrast of the blue and the red is really hard to read. Okay, that makes a ton of sense to me. That's really, really clear. Clearest and easiest to read. It's easiest to read uh, amongst the backdrop. So I thought coming into this, that this actually wasn't gonna be the winner. I thought one of the dark backgrounds were gonna be the winner. That would have been my gut, but it seems people actually really like the minimal design. We're talking a lot about readability. So maybe there's some gains you can make here with making maybe the numbers a little bit larger, a little bit bolder, but. I think that's something I've also learned when running a lot of these PICFU tests is it depends what you choose and what you're testing for. So um, in that example, if you choose everything that has a blue background and you put in one white photo, um, that's, the, the, that's the psychology of, you know, picking the one thing that stands out. So you have to really be objective about that's where that so many variables can, in some sense, like sway a voter one way or another, because they're making on pick they're making impulse decisions like they're they're taking this poll, they're picking the right one and then going through it. But yeah, whatever's the standout usually can sway things. So just depending on the photos that you pick. Yep, exactly. And standout doesn't always have to be bright. Sometimes it could be white, white against blue. Depends what the page looks yeah, like. If you had picked all white photos and picked one blue background, every that blue definitely would have won. So yeah, you have to, and I think that's where you can also be a little bit specific in the questions that you ask, like, cause you can write whatever question you want. So um, you can ask them maybe to acknowledge, like if you were to pick a design or, you know, looking at the product or whatever you want them to focus on might help legibility. Mm -hmm. That's great. Good stuff. We got a couple minutes to lap. Should we dive into something random? Yeah, let's do it. Um, right. If anyone wants to name a category on Amazon, we can pull up Amazon and have the three of you guys dive into that. Um, let's just go with sports. Um, oh boy. Um, what's like a sport? A sp like, what's more specific than sports? Like, a um, should we do uh, do like ba basketball training equipment? Someone said. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Going <laughs> Thank you. We're all panicking for a second. Thanks. <laughs> Trying to remember what, what people buy. Um, let's see here. All right. Let's pull it up now. All right. Oh, you got it? Um, go for it. You can, you can do it. Got it. All right. So we had basketball training equipment. Sounds good. I'm not even sure what kind of training equipment is for basketball. So here we go. All right. Like agility, 
buddy. It's all sponsored at the top, which is another big shift on Amazon. A lot less organic placements are happening over time. Agility. So things I'm scanning for are like review counts, something like 4,200. So agility, agility and hands, it looks like. Should we pick one of these agility? Let's more specific trainers? The speed okay. agility, do you want to do that? Yeah, let's try the speed agility training sets. Looks like that's the most common. There we go. Okay. Yeah, well, I think layout here, when you have a, a set of things that have a lot of different items, that's where the layout is super creative and that's where you can really like try to stand out as much as possible from the competitors. And, and I wanna make a quick note on this as well, Brandon or Mallory, if you just scroll up real quick, what's really interesting is if you look at the one with the best seller badge, and I've seen this over and over again on pick through results is like, you can, if you compare the one with the Amazon choice badge to the one on the right, it's very interesting because the one with the Amazon choice badge does a very good job of grouping all of the similar inclusions. You'll notice that all of the cones are together, the ladders together, uh, whatever the, the parachute, right? And so it's like your brain is going to digest things by groupings versus the one to the right. You've got the cones on the two sides. Um, it's not as like grouped of, okay, you're getting this many cones, you're getting the ladder. You can kind of identify what are the different parts of the main image very quick, even if you don't realize that your brain is uh, kind of making that rather than just having everything organized just in a way that looks visually impressive rather than by the, the group yeah, itself. Exactly. The other thing I'm noticing too is, is how there's like horizontal versus depth. Mm -hmm. It's like the one that has the Amazon's choice badge and some of the other ones too that have really good ratings. It's more of like it's forward facing versus the, the yellow one that's three in. You almost have to it's like look all the way down the field, like see what's included in this packaging. Whereas the other ones are like a more flat flat face image to some extent. Yeah, there's something to like the wind resistant thing here looking like it's being used. Right. Like if that were just folded up, I would never know what that is. And that's really appealing because I'm automatically picturing myself using it. So as a consumer, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I want. Like I want to look, that's what I'm gonna do. Exactly, that's a great one because the third image in doesn't actually have that wind. And I guess when yeah. I first saw it, I'm like, what are those? An umbrella. And then I looked at the one on the left, I'm like, oh, okay. I attach it to myself and I run, I think yeah. <laughs> that's what it's for. That's pretty cool though. So there's that one. Let's go down a little bit more and see what else we can spot here. So some of the more side versus long. Even the color though too, like um, if you're thinking about product variations or potential launches, like picking a color that would stand out that might be something to think about mm -hmm. yeah. all of these are yellow be the bright green or something all right blues and yellows which is an interesting color choice actually i think for like agility i'd always think like orange for some reason when i think of yeah. and things like that versus yellows and blues well they've got so this is a brandon was talking earlier about the importance of video uh with the sponsored brand videos but i think this is like super important for the yeah. search results to you know, it's a good video too. And that's engaging. Yeah, and it's a product that only has 128 reviews. I mean, some, some of these other players should be bidding more aggressively on this, these sponsored brand video spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right now there's a, it's a big market open because there's not a lot of, not, especially in some categories, there's almost no competition for some of these sponsored videos. And so if you can put together something, it doesn't need to be complex, but just something that shows the product in use with some text to reinforce the points. Uh, the key features of the product and have something that not required to listen to audio for it to make full sense. You just get something like that thrown together. It's uh, you, it can be a big game changer for sure. Exactly. And some of the other things I'm noticing too is, is people versus no people. And the ones that seem to be ranking more with no people are towards the top. So if I was some of these ones that had, had, had people in it, I might take them out potentially. Maybe it's too cluttered. It's, you can gain enough information from the imagery versus yeah. having people in it. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. There's some good ones here. There's one, there's a, I think it was this one, this orange one here did really good use of space. Like there's not a lot of white space around the products like some of these others and uh, it just feels really concise and it shows me that there's a lot of information on like maybe how to use it or training instructions, mm -hmm. um, different workout routines. So yeah, I think that. It's a cool category. So why don't we, let's pick, we only have a couple minutes left. Let's pick the top two, two or three that seem like they're the best sellers. And you see if there's any any things we would improve on here, which is gonna be the Amazon's choice one. 
Let's see. So you want to do a couple? We can look at this one. Either this one or the. Let's just focus on this one for another few minutes. Yeah. Um, I like that they've already got it in use. So typically on Amazon, you see white background photos pretty exclusively on a lot of um, listings. And when you can answer the questions for a consumer before they can even think that to ask them, uh, I think that's where you can use photography in a, in a really unique way. And so that's a, a good thing to invest in. Um, and you can also communicate a lot of things with stock photography, but I think anything showing your product and use is definitely going to be helpful. This has really good uh, features and benefits too, and um, information about like what is included. So I think this yeah. is doing a good job. One thing that I noticed is they don't actually have a basketball image, do they? Soccer, running, working out, well, they agility. Speed agility. Yeah. There's something that, so one thing I, I noticed too, um, so thinking about titles, and so run, jump rope, resistance bands for training football, soccer, basketball, um, but they yeah. don't have some of the sports in the imagery. I see, yeah. That's There's a little bit of a disconnect to some of these. It's a more fitness oriented. So maybe they know their audience, or maybe there's a there's an opportunity there to include basketball. There's no video. Um, there's no video to watch things in action, how to set it up. Uh, and that's another great way to connect with your consumer base. Yeah, if there's got football, soccer, and basketball, you would want to show people engaging with all those sports. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's a good one, Colin. Very good. <laughs> Great. All right. all right. Cool. That was fun. Well, Let's Anthony, um, if you want to give a plug for PicFu, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I, I won't plug PicFu too much. I'll just tell you that it works, right? If Thrasia is using it a lot, <laughs> you can probably take that as a, as a good indication. Uh, it definitely works. And uh, if you're out there and you're selling, and you're just going for your own gut or you're asking, you know, friends and family, you know, I guess what I would say is when you're launching a product, when you're selling a product, you're not going to skimp on other parts of your business. You're not going to skimp on your inventory. You're not going to skimp and say, Hey, I'll just do my inspections myself, or I'm just going to fulfill myself and not have to pay fulfillment fees. You're going to, you're going to do it. And so market research pick food didn't invent it, uh, but it's been around since the beginning of time. You should probably take a little bit more of a scientific approach to guiding your creative process and just going with your gut. So check it out. And uh, yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Mallory. That was great. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you next week.